In the next few videos, we're going to be talking about quadrilaterals. And quadrilaterals are shapes in which we have four line segments that are joined together. And over here, we have a type of quadrilateral that is known as a parallelogram. As we can see, it has four line segments that are joined together, but what distinguishes a parallelogram from other quadrilaterals is that we have opposite sides that are parallel. So we can see that side AB is parallel to side DC, side AD is parallel to side BC. And parallelograms have quite a few interesting properties that we are going to be talking about in this video and next. And I'm going to start out by listing some of the properties of parallelograms, and then we can go on to prove those properties. The first property of parallelograms is one that I've just mentioned. Opposite sides are parallel. And here I've used the shorthand for parallel. So whenever you see a symbol like this, it means parallel. So our opposite sides are parallel, meaning a B is parallel to DC and a D is parallel to BC. The second property of parallelograms is that the pairs of the opposite sides are going to have equal lengths. That means that side AD is going to be equal in length to side BC and side AB is equal in length to side DC. So pairs of opposite sides are equal in length, which means that AD is equal to BC and AB is equal to DC. The third property is that opposite angles are equal. That means that angle A is going to be equal to angle C and angle B is equal to angle D. And now I'm gonna take a second to try and prove to you that these properties are true. So if we take our parallelogram and copy the same one down here, and if we were to join these sides by a diagonal, what we've basically done by joining these two sides by a diagonal is we have created two triangles. We can see we have a triangle here that's made up of sides B, A, D, and we have a triangle here that's made up of B, C, D. And this should be familiar to you because what we have also done is we have created a transversal that is cutting through parallel lines. So if you recall from our last few videos, when we have a transversal that is cutting through parallel lines, we can extract some information about these angles that relate to one another, and a lot of them are going to have equal values. So the first thing that we can notice is that if we were to label each of these parts as one and two, so we can distinguish between our two separate angles that we've created, what we can notice is that we have some alternate interior angles. Over here, angle D1 is going to be equal to angle B1 because these are alternate interior angles. We have our two parallel lines here and we have our transversal. And we can recall that alternate interior angles are going to be on the inside of the parallel lines and on opposite sides of the transversal. So we have the top versus the bottom. We also can notice that we have another set of alternate interior angles, and that is angle B2, which is going to be equal to angle D2 because of the same reason. These are also alternate interior angles. They are inside the parallel lines and on opposite sides of the transversal. And now another thing that we can notice is that in our two triangles, this triangle, this BAD triangle, is made up of this green angle, an unlabeled angle, and a blue angle, and has this side BD that it shares with our other triangle. Our other triangle, BCD, is going to have that common side BD. So it's going to have one side with the same length as our other triangle since they share this side. And this triangle is also going to be made up of a blue angle, a green angle, an unlabeled angle, and this common side. So if we recall from our last video on congruency in triangles, we can recall that we have one of our rules that is going to tell us that two triangles are congruent, and that is the angle-angle side rule. 
So by the angle angle side rule, if we have one side with the same length and two angles that have the same values, our two triangles are congruent. So we know that triangle BAD is congruent to triangle DCB. So I'm just going to scroll down here and give ourselves a little bit more space. So let's first just write down the information that we have discovered about this. We know that angle B1 is equal to angle D1. We also know that angle B2 is equal to angle D2. And that is because they are alternate interior angles. We also know that triangle ABD triangle ABD is congruent to triangle, we have to remember that the order here is very important, so we're going from the unlabeled angle to the green angle to the blue angle, so that would be our unlabeled angle, which is C, to our green angle, which is D, and our blue angle, which is B. So we know that triangle ABD is congruent to triangle CDB, because of our angle, angle, side rule. And that is that when we have two of our corresponding angles equal and one of our corresponding sides equal, we know that our triangles are congruent. And what is another thing that we know about congruent triangles? We know that in congruent triangles, each of the corresponding side lengths will be equal and each of the corresponding angles will be equal. And that means that this angle over here is going to be equal to this angle over here because these are corresponding angles in our two congruent triangles. We also know that side BC is going to be equal to side AD in length because they are corresponding sides in our congruent triangles. And similarly, we also know that side AB is going to be equal in length to side CD because they are corresponding sides in our congruent triangles. So let's just make a note of that there. We know that angle A is equal to angle C because our triangles are congruent. We know that side AD is going to be equal in length to side BC because our triangles are congruent. We know that side AB is going to be equal to side DC also because our triangles are congruent and they are corresponding sides. And so what we have just approved by this is that in a parallelogram, firstly, our opposite side lengths are going to be equal. That was one of our properties that we had written down here. Our second property was that pairs of opposite sides are equal in length. So we have just proved that that is true. What we have also proved is that opposite angles are equal. So our third property we have proved because as we can see, if we ignore this transversal line or this diagonal line, these are two opposite angles and they are equal. We can also see that B1 and 2 and D1 and 2 are opposite angles and they are also going to be equal because they're made up of the green angle and the blue angle and the blue angle and the green angle those have the same values. So angle B, if you ignore this diagonal line, angle B, which is going to be made up of B1 and B2, is going to be equal to angle D, which is made up of D1 and D2. So we have proved that opposite angles are equal and that opposite sides are equal in length. In the next video, we're going to go over a few more properties of parallelograms and go over a few important examples to make all of these points even more clear.